Hello world, Shelly here, and today I'm going to give you guys a quick little get ready with me that looks like you took a lot longer to do your makeup than you actually did. And the secret for me to accomplishing that is a lot of cream products and eyeshadow sticks and consolidating steps wherever possible. So I've got a bare face right now. I'm going to show you guys how I get there. And what I've been doing lately is really enjoying the Caudalie Vino Perfect Radiance Serum as a primer when I'm going to do a very light foundation day. And I just take a couple drops and go in like primer. Now, of course, I've already got my skincare on and I focus this stuff on the areas I would focus my primer. You know, my pore areas, my cheeks here on my forehead it gives a nice little glow and it gives a bunch of hydration and it looks really nice under makeup and it smells lovely and i really like it i just bought the not the radiance serum version of this because i have like three of these sample size so this is going to last me a little while but the hydration version of it in the full size Loving that too. I've actually got that on underneath my moisturizer. So that is a good first step that just gives a little bit of like, you know, a little brightness to the skin. For foundation, I am going to use my beloved Dior Skin Glow, Dior Forever Skin Glow. I have this in shade 0N and in shade 1CR and sometimes I mix them. I, I don't have any sun yet so I can still get away with using 0N on its own and when I'm looking for a quick Makeup day, I use it on its own and just out the door, one pump. We're gonna use fingers. That's one of the nicest parts of this foundation. You can wear it sheared out, you can apply with fingers, you can apply with a brush, you can apply with a sponge. Like, this foundation is gorgeous no matter how you apply it, no matter how you build it up. If you want medium coverage, go for it. If you want sheer, go for it. I can also tell you guys that yesterday I wore it, not yesterday, I guess it was a few days ago now, I wore it to our university graduation ceremony. I teach at JMU. How, how do I get foundation on my eyeball? I Just really, guys. And so I go to graduation every year, as I did, and I wore this as my foundation, a medium coverage application of this. And it was, you know, 80 degrees-ish. We were in the sun all morning for several hours because the ceremony went exceptionally long. And I was curious how this foundation was going to hold up in heat and humidity. And I'm very happy to report that not only did it hold up beautifully, it's like it didn't even mess up. I didn't even get transfer on my graduation cap, you know, the mortarboard that comes down your forehead. It was just perfect and beautiful. Nothing moved around, nothing slid off my face, nothing caked up or looked gross when I got all sweaty. It was just lovely. And that's about it for foundation. Like, mwah. did I not blend this out? Yeah, let's just leave a spot right on the side of my face. That's a good idea. There we go. Isn't this stuff just so good you guys I love this foundation I love it even more than when I reviewed it like for concealer I'm just gonna do a little dab of the julep 5-in-1 cushion turmeric sometimes I just can't help myself and I add a little bit more it's supposed to be a light makeup day Shelly stop stop going crazy and I just blend in with fingers my nostrils never look like I have coverage. I swear I put product here. Next, I'm gonna do a tiny bit of cream contour, and I think this is part of the steps that make it look like you spent more time on your makeup than you did, because contour is something that, you know, I will usually slack off on if I don't have time. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this NYX. It's a double-sided, it's the Face Duo. I wonder if they still make this. It's a Sculpt and Highlight, and I love the undertone of the bronzer contour, and it blends out super nicely. And I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of a cheekbone where my fat is. It's 
almost got that reddish undertone to it, which I love. That's why I love the Balm Desert bronzer, because it works great as a like bronze tour kind of a thing. You know, just give yourself a little bit of color there. Now I'm gonna go in with the Natasha Denona Bloom Blush and Glow Palette. And I like to take the cream products first. That is the little highlight, that is the a blush. And I go in with the highlight, not quite as high as I would do a highlight. It becomes like a blush starter for me. If you have less fair skin, it probably would be a highlight on you. But I keep it just a little lower because you know I'm gonna go in with actual highlight in a minute. But it's a sort of pinkish, it's got a little bit of a sheen to it. It probably could be a light blush on me if I wanted it to be. Then I go one boop, boop, into the blush. And tap it all around and then blend. Again, if you are not as fair skinned as I am, you can go a little more ham on this, but you see how it's nice and easy to, to have a, a light blush look, even though this looks really dramatic in the pan. Oh, I think I booped too hard. We're gonna see. I might have too much product. Nah, it's working. Now I will go in with the blush and highlight. This is a sort of peachish blush and a highlight. I'm of course gonna do more highlight than that because this is kind of dark on me. The highlight in this palette is more of a blush topper on me and I know we just did blush so this is kind of a topper but it tones down the berry if you want more of a natural look to it and even though I like the berry too. I like it both ways and it's it's got kind of a sheen to it. So it's, it's just a little bit of oomph. I'm gonna use the same brush, go into the highlights. You could stop there, I never stop there. I'm going to go into the Fenty Beauty. This is the Diamond Bomb. It is the most beautiful topper highlight of life. I said in a recent video, I do wear it on its own sometimes, but oh, to top with it, I can't even handle it. Excess on the nose because reasons. At this point, sometimes I will set my face with a little bit of powder, sometimes I won't. I'm kind of feeling like I want to today, so I'm going to grab my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Giant Fluffy Brush. This is a uh, Moda, Moda brush, I think. Royal and Land Nickel, <laughs> they make the Moda Pros. I think I got it at, I think I got it at Walmart. And I just kind of do very lightly, like two boobs, whole face. Boop is an official unit of measurement now. Just enough to kind of set everything down, lock it in. For brows, this is where I do some step consolidation. I like to use a colored brow gel. This is the Benefit Gimme Brow, a little baby size. And that way I don't have to spend time filling in my brows quite so much, but I still have a little bit more drama than my plain old brows on their own. If that makes any sense, it saves me some time, but still gives me most of the effect that I'm going for when I do my brows. I really do like Gimme Brow. I should use it more often. My primary brow, see, then I stab myself in the eye. This is why makeup always takes forever for me because I spend half of my time cleaning up the mess I made. MAC Paint Pot in Painterly to prime my lids. For quick eye looks, eyeshadow sticks are one of my favorite ways to just get her done. And through the Octoly PR program, I received several different shades of the Lancome Ombre Hypnose Stylo. 
eyeshadow sticks. I got seven different shades. There are 19 different shades available on Lancome's website. They retail for $25 a piece. I was sent these complimentary from Lancome and they're double eyeshadow stick slash liner. They have all of the packaging has the color of the liner on the back end. You get your eyeshadow stick in a twisty up base and then the opposite end removes so that you can sharpen the point of your shadow stick slash liner. They are waterproof once they set down, although they start out very creamy. Here are the swatches of the seven shades that I was sent. They are very high pig pigment. They are very smooth, creamy to apply. They give you a little bit of time to work with them and then they set down and stay put. So I'm going to do an eye look with these. I don't have a shade that is light enough for a transition color. So I am gonna go into my Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the Sunset palette. I dropped it the other day and broke it. And that makes me not happy, but I will survive. And I'm gonna use the transition shade in this palette because it's just a nice sort of universally acceptable transition shade. This is the Wayne Goss 03 brush. If you buy no other Wayne Goss brush in your life, you need this one. Although I would honestly say you should buy them all because they are my favorites of life. I'm gonna use the shade 28 Rubris as my crease color and you can blend these out with either finger or a brush. If you do decide to go with a brush, you're going to want to use a more dense brush so that you've got a little bit more um, ability to move a cream product around because cream of course is just a smidge tougher to blend out than a you know finely milled powder would be. oh look how pretty that color is a finely milled powder would be sorry i get distracted by pretties oh look at that Mm -mm -mm. Now, this is not my first time using these. I've had these for about a month now, so I have been playing around with them, although I've never done the color combo that I am attempting today. Next, I'm gonna go in with number 30, Amethyst. How do I not use the purple? I mean, come on, people. And I'm gonna use this on the outer third or so of my eye. Oh, let's just make it half because it's beautiful. And this one I'll show you blending out with fingertip. And if you want more dense color, then just go in and layer it up. Because as it dries down, you'll be able to layer over it if you like. Next I'll take shade 26 or rose. This one is super shimmery and use this for the inner part of the lid. And instead of drawing on top of the purple, I'm gonna pack a little bit extra right in the middle and then just use my fingertip to blend it over. can define a sort of a fake cut crease if you would like. Might as well. And I'm gonna take a little in the inner corner. For a little dimension in the outer corner, I'm gonna take a little bit of 27 bronze and just do a little dab right in the outer seven area. Thanks to Nisha at Sugar Puff and Fluff for calling it the outer seven because I think that's perfect for those of us with hooded lids. And I'm just gonna use my, this is the Makeup Geek Outer V brush to just blend that out a tiny bit. And just because I'm clumsy, I'm gonna bring a little bit back into my crease 
because I usually take my lid colors too high up, but I like to have the crease color in place before I do my lid color because it, it gives me that visual stopping point. You know, I see where it will be most appropriate to stop the color on my lid going upward. So I like to have it there even though most of the time then I end up having to go back in and touch it up. One of the most important steps in saving time in my eye routine is skipping liquid liner because that will add at least five minutes every time. I'm gonna use the 32 Onyx in the Lancome Ombre Sticks and use that to tight line my upper lash line. And what I'm gonna do is also kind of, since I'm not gonna do a liquid liner and I almost always do a liquid liner, I'm gonna take it just into like the the root of my lashes and then I can smudge it just a tiny bit and make it look like a faux liner or at least just a little bit of a lash line. I like to have a little definition on my lash line because I just feel like it makes my lashes look fuller. You could skip this all together if you wanted. You do not have to do this liner step. The look is just as pretty without it. Oh, but I just think my lashes look so much better with a little bit of liner. This Onyx shade does have the tiniest bit of sparkle to it that I, I only see it in the swatches. I really don't see it on my eyes. So that is that. Curl the lashes. Before I put on mascara, I'm gonna set everything down with my Anastasia do we set spray? And I'm gonna try not to talk while spraying so I don't spray it directly in my mouth. For mascara, I'm gonna use the Wander Beauty Unlashed. It's a little bit less dramatic than some of my others, but still gives a lot of nice volume and length. And so it's the kind of mascara that works well for a look like this. Ooh, my lashes look kind of good today. What is happening? Am I really here? Is this really life? Is this real life? Is this just fantasy? My camera shut off while I was singing. How rude. Here's a little trick if you have really long lower lashes and you get a lot of transfer under your eyes, take a clean cotton swab when your mascara is fresh and wet and just roll it under to grab any excess product from the underside of your lashes so it doesn't end up on your face. I still get a little transfer no matter what because my lower lashes right in the middle are really long, but I'm not gonna complain about that because I'd rather them be too long than not there. These kind of makeup looks, I usually go for something easy going on the lips. I'm gonna use my Buxom Plumping Gloss this is in the shade of French Martini. And here is the finished look in real time with explaining everything and then having to go grab my purse to get the color of lip gloss I wanted. This took about 27 minutes. In real life, I can do this in 15 to 20 if I am trying to get out the door and it looks a lot closer to a full face of makeup than not a full face of makeup. So this is my sort of quick, less than 30 minutes out the door kind of thing. A full face, you know, if I'm going to a wedding or something and it's a full on ordeal, I give myself an hour and a half to two to do my makeup. If I'm gonna do a regular full face, it takes me about an hour, you know, an everyday full face, not going so far as nose contour, you know, that kind of thing. But this is my kind of everyday go-to 20 minute face. So there you have it, using some of my favorites. If you enjoy Get Ready With Me's, if you had a good time with this one, give me a thumbs up down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate it, and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.